In this bonus lecture, we're going to learn how to take a master workbook and with a macro that's inside of it, be able to go into a folder, for example, C and then the temp folder and loop through any Excel workbooks and open each one, grab the data it needs. Let's take a look at them. Here's the master data workbook. You have four titles here, four columns, and we'll open up and just take a look at one of them. So you see they're all in the same order for the ease of this lecture. Uh, we're just going to take all the data and uh, we're going to put them all in our master workbook. Let me close that. So it'll. we're going to go to the next available row and we're going to pull from the other workbook. So let's show you how to do that really quick. The basis of all this comes from the file scripting object. And I'm not going to get into the technicalities of how that works, but I'm going to show you the basis of what we're going to work with. So let's go ahead and loop through the code here and I'll explain what's there and then we'll go to the part where we actually write the code to import the information. So let's just get the basics out of the way. First of all, we're declaring WB as whatever workbook we're, we're looping through. The current workbook is going to be WB. The current sheet we're talking about will be WS for worksheet. FSO is going to be the file scripting object. Basically, it's something that allows you to loop uh, or allows you to um, go through different folders and files and things um, through your computer. And then uh, we'll be using FLDR. That's going to be the folder that I typed in here, C slash temp folder. And then uh, let's go ahead and hit F8 a few times. So we just set FSO to be this thing here. And then FSO dot get folder is going to tell it that we want to get this folder and we want to use FLDR to represent that object. Simple so far, right? Now we're going to loop through each file in FLDR. Each file in FLDR, okay? So for each WB file, and the, each file is going to be represented by this, so I'm going to hit F8. So the first file is going to be data1.xlsx, and whenever we go to the next in the loop, it will make this WB file be the next workbook in that folder here. So if fso.get extension name, the get extension name simply means we're trying to figure out what the extension is. We want it to be an XLS file. So if it's an Excel file, now you notice it, it skipped over. So what we want to do is we want to make sure it's an XLS X file in our case. So if the extension of the file dot name is xlsx, which it is, so now we're only looking for xlsx files in that folder. We don't want PDF files, etc. So that's that's a really good thing here. Then our wb variable, we want that to be equal to the current workbook for the current path. So wb file dot path will be the full file path, and we're going to open that workbook using workbooks.open. So it's two commands in one. We're opening it and we're setting WB to be temporarily the variable that represents that particular book as it's open. So let's hit F8. It now opens up the, the new data one workbook and WB is going to be representative of that workbook. So whenever we want to represent or do something with that, we use WB for the time being. So for each uh, WS in so for each sheet in wb.sheets, now here's where we're going to go ahead and put our own code in here. So um, when I hit F8, it's going to go ahead and go into this loop. I'm going to hit F8, and I just put stop there so it wouldn't go to the next worksheet. So what we want to do with each worksheet in that workbook is we want to find the last row. So I'm going to say WSLR, meaning for that particular sheet, equals WS.cells using rows.count1.nxlup.row. That will get us the last row. Let me hit F8. Perfect. So we have row 11. That is the last row. We're going to go from 2 to the last row. So for X equals 2 to WSLR. And next X up tab all right so we're in position now to go ahead and loop through all this stuff we need to have the starting row for our original workbook so let's go up here before we get through this loop here 
And let's go ahead and make sure that we have our starting row. Y equals, uh, and that's gonna be the starting row. So I'm gonna call this orig LR. That's gonna be equal to this workbook dot sheets, sheet one dot cells, and we'll do the same thing, rows dot count dot end using XL up dot row. So now we'll have the, uh, the orig LR, we're gonna put it as Y. So let's go back. So 31 is the original LR. In fact, we need uh, the next row. So excuse me, plus one. So this is gonna be 32. Then we're gonna loop through uh, those things. We already know that we're in this workbook. So we're, we're gonna go back in our current spot in the loop. And we're going to say, the last row for that worksheet is 11. We're gonna go from two to 11, and we're basically going to take that information and plant it into our current worksheet, workbook, excuse me. So we're gonna say this workbook dot sheets, and sheet one, that's where we want it to go, right? Dot cells, and we're gonna use Y, because Y is the current row that we just established. And then column one, equals, and now WS, remember that is the current sheet on the other workbook, the one that we temporarily have open. So we're gonna use ws.cells row X. X is the current row that we're going to loop through, uh, starting with two all the way to the end row on the currently open temporary worksheet. And this is also column one. So we'll just say column one, or you could say name. Now this is where it gets real easy. We're gonna copy and paste this. Paste, paste, and all we have to do is tweak column two on our master workbook is gonna come from column two of that one, and column three is gonna come from column three of the temporary sheet, column four. Now, once you've done all that, you're gonna say y equals y plus one. The reason is because we are looping through x, that's automatically incrementing by one, but Y doesn't increment unless you tell it to. So once you're done with that particular row Y on your master, 32, one, two, three, four, you've printed a wall here, then you want Y to be equal to itself plus one. So you want it to now be uh, 33 and ready for more stuff from row X, which is auto incrementing. So let's try this out. So for X equals two to the last row, uh, let's see, column 32, Row one is gonna come from uh, X, row X, which is two in column one, right. So it's kinda of gonna say Geraldo, customer service, and then that date right there, in fact, we need to do C date. You can either use the C date function if the dates are coming through a little funny, or you can just uh, format this entire column as a date. Otherwise, you're gonna get this little serial number, which is a, a number that represents the that date. So let's try do using C date. All right, so that, that goes ahead and converts it on the fly, and that's fine for our purposes. What I would rather do though is just format this column as a date and it'll come through and format it itself. And then the dollar amount. So this is another formatting thing. We would really just wanna format this entire column D as, as a dollar sign or accounting or however you want it to set up. That way the value of 482 coming into that cell would automatically just format it, make it pretty the way you want it. Y is gonna be equal itself plus one. So now we're looking at row 33 and we're looking at the new row X of three. So now everything is incrementing really, really well and putting all that information over. And I don't think we have too many more rows, let's see. I'm gonna hit F8 a few times. We need to get to row 11 because that's when that worksheet is essentially, we're done with it. Here we are, the last row is row 11. So now that we're done with X, looping through X, it says next WS. That means the next worksheet in uh, the other workbook. And I don't think there is any other worksheets in the other workbook. So we're gonna, we looped right past that. Now WB represents the current uh, temporary workbook so wb.close, and you could do save changes equals false if it comes up with a dialog box, but it did not, it didn't ask us to save anything, so that's perfect. And then end if. So then the next wb file 
So whenever it comes up with that, it's going to find data2.xlsx, and now it's going to do the same exact thing. And now what I'm realizing is that this y thing, we really need to find out what the last row is every time. So we can control X or control C. Let's go ahead and do this right here, right before, actually, excuse me, we'll need to get, yeah, we need to get the, the new Y of the master worksheet uh, every time we loop to a new workbook. So it should be, let's see, it's still 40, 42. Okay, that's fine. All right, so then the extension name is this. We open up the next workbook and essentially we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna say this one has also 11 records and we're gonna loop through it. Let's go ahead and just hit uh, put a breakpoint right here and hit F5 or click this right here. So it's already we've already got all the records from this and we're gonna close that workbook and we're gonna do one more. I think there's another workbook in here which also has 11 records, but these are different records. And we'll just hit F5. And we'll close that one. And that's pretty much it. Um, there's another file in there, but it, it's, it's this workbook. It ends in XLSM because it's a macro enabled workbook. So whenever we get to the get extension name and we're trying to make sure it's an XLSX file, it'll say nope. And then it will, uh, it will essentially not continue on and then it'll move past that loop and be done. So that's how you can loop through uh, multiple workbooks, open them up and dissect them and do whatever you'd like with them. So we got all these new records. And again, what I would do is I would click on uh, column D and you go to format cells and you can just make it currency or whatever you want. And that way anything that comes through will automatically have whatever formatting that you wanted. All right, we'll see you in the next lecture.